political stories in Nigeria. I am Ola Jumoke Olatunji. It's 24 days to the conduct of the 2023 general elections and there is heightened anticipation towards the poll. Now let's begin with some stories shaping the policy before we go into the interview segment. With our special guest, Kale Jaye Adeboye Paul, APC candidate for House of Representatives in Nigeria, Me fellow to federal constituency of Lagos State. The Coalition of United Political Parties, CUPP, sent up the Muhammad Ubaid attempts to cause unprecedented mayhem and insecurity in a bid to disrupt the coming elections. The petition was signed by about 15 leaders of the group. The CUPP asked the president to ensure that politicians whose actions are geared towards making uh, the political space conducive for terrorists to thrive are arrested and brought to book. In the letter titled, Urgent Need to Arrest and Prosecute Politicians Trying to Scuttle the 2023 Elections by Blackmailing Our Military, the group singled out a senator candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in the state as the alleged number one promoter of insecurity in the state and urged the president to direct security agencies to act on several petitions against the politician. The Supreme Council for Sharia in Nigeria has asked the federal government and Nigerians to prevail on the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to hold forthcoming general election same day. Members of the council who met in Kaduna expressed fear that violence may mar strategic pose. The Secretary General of the Council, Nafil Baba Ahmed, explained that sources also confirmed to the council that security agencies may be overwhelmed by the common, or rather, the looming political violence. And according to them, the violence might be triggered by desperate politicians who may lose the contest on the first day. There is nothing more important than public peace and security. And this is what is at stake. Therefore, we call with, in, in, you know, uh, on all well-meaning Nigerians the security agencies, the government, and organize one day. It is quite possible, in fact, highly probable, that some desperate politicians who, have, who might lose the election could trigger political violence to the extent that the subsequent elections may not even hold. Now let's take a short break and when we return, it will be time to speak with the APC candidate for House of Representatives in Nigeria, me fellow to federal constituency of Lagos State, Kalejaye Adeboye Paul, on his contract with his constituents as well as other political issues. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're still watching Politics Tonight, digging beyond the headlines. And now to our interview with the guests of the day. I am now joined by Kalejaye Adeboye Paul, the All Progressives Congress APC candidate for House of Representatives in Ajero Mi Feludu Federal Constituency of Lagos State. As a grassroots mobilizer who has served as special advisor in the administration of former governors Bola Ahmed Tinubu and Babatunde Raju Fashala in Lagos State. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Yeah, thank you very much and good evening viewers and people from Ajero, me, fellow in federal council. I say good evening. I say good evening. Yeah, I say good evening. All right. I'm sure they can <laughs> hear you. All right. Now, can you share your mission for wanting to serve in the Green Chambers for Ajero, me, fellow in federal constituency? Well, first and foremost, let me say that it's been my desire to be in the parliament. And uh, this agitation has started for quite a long time. I'm a man who is giving to having a voice for the voiceless. Uh, even as a student union activist, I've been a voice for the people. And post, you know, tertiary education, I've also been involved in National Nigerian Union of Journalists, uh, Nigerian Union of Teachers, uh, politics. I've been on and on. And my agitation, my desire, always speak for the people has always been there. But preeminently, what I intend to do now is to ensure that um, the place called Ajiromi Fellow Federal Constituency is a mini Nigeria. 
And what do I mean by calling the place a mini Nigeria? This is a place where all the tribes, all the ethnic nationalities in Nigeria are present. You have the Yorubas in large you know, percentage. You have the Aousas. You have the, the Igbos. You have the Biobios. You have the Shakiris. You have the, you know, the, 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 the ethnic and all kind of nationality that lives in this community. So it's a place to test the unity and development of Nigeria. Because any development you do in Nigeria, or me, fellow in federal constituents, you have done to every Nigeria, because every Nigerian is represented in that community. And I also believe that um, the previous people who have served in the National Assembly, particularly mm -hmm. the House of Reps, have done their bits. I commend the effort of my you know, serving Honorable Honorable Kola Ole Taiwo, who has done so well. But it's just that there must be a change of button. And then we must also have a fresh idea. And I also know that he has commenced some developmental project, which is called the Constituency Project. My first mission is to ensure that those projects are well completed. And then go ahead to also ensure that I play in the polity of the National Assembly. And playing the polity of the National Assembly means that you must also be able to integrate your into the national polity. Politics is not about regional politics alone. It's not about tribal politics. It's about national politics. So you must also align yourself with the national politics, which is first and foremost one of the reasons why I also want to serve. And in doing this, everybody aggregates what comes to his own constituency in terms of development. So I intend to bring to Ajiromi fellow Doom people all that, they are, that is desired, all that is necessary, all that is their rights and privileges as citizens of this country. All right. I understand this is your fourth attempt on this mission and that you've been asked to step down on different occasions, one in 2011, in 2015, and 2019. Tell us what really happened. Hey, what happened? It's about um, a politics that we play in our party, a politics of ensuring that we have organization. We have people... We are governed by some parameters. At the first instance when I was asked to step down, I was still serving in the cabinet of Mr. Abatunde Raji Fashola. Okay. And then leadership believed that I should continue in cabinet rather than go to the parliament. So there is no time I've been... It's just that my desire to move to the parliament. Of course, they feel that my potentials are more useful in the executive then. And then so... I was deprived the first time. The second time, I'm asked, I was asked to give room for the first-timer who was representing us to do a second time, which, of course, is reasonable. And the last one, I was deprived because somebody who also have had much more experience in the politics of the parliament was also running with me. And in the wisdom of our party, the fact that He's been Deputy Speaker in the Lagos State House of Assembly. I'm going to take a fresh shot in the parliament. And they feel he's more experienced. And they'd ask me to give way. But I did. But there is no point, there is no time I've been so deprived, as it were, in court, that have lost interest in the party. i would always remained a party member, a loyalist of that party for that matter, and I always work assiduously for the success of the party. So that explains why... You know, I'm lucky this time around. And though I still want my primaries very clearly and distinctly, but I'm appreciative that the party has given me the ticket this time around. And it's never late. Maybe they were wanting me to All wait right. for my Is boss. Is it that the party gave you this ticket because they are trying to reward you for your loyalty and commitment rather than uh, Jeremy Fellow to federal constituency? First of all, you want to look at my pedigree. And in your intro, you did introduce me as somebody who has served. I've served the government of Lagos State very assiduously, and I've served the cabinet of Lagos State. I served cabinet of Lagos State for six and a half years. I have a wealth of experience. I've also served as chairman and CEO of Lagos Ferry Services. I pioneered the Lagos Ferry Services. And the, 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 the world-class boat, ferries, you see on Lagos waterways today were purchased during my tenure. I, 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 I began the revolution of the water transportation. So it means that I'm, I'm, I'm experienced. So it's not a reward for <laughs> having been patient. 
I also told you I won my primaries. And I won my primaries by over, almost over 80, 90 percent of the other contestants. I contested with three other people. I won. So it's not about security. It's about me. It's about loyalty. It's about my ability. It's about my, you know, everything that has to do with me. Don't forget, I'm a trained teacher. I'm a journalist. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a filmmaker. I'm an actor. I'm a mm. businessman. Right. I, I, I pack everything that has to do with, I've gone to school severally, and I'm still in school. I'm currently completing my PhD program in public administration. So I have always been there. All right, Mr. Kalajai. When we come back from this break, we will talk about your pedigree. But for now, let's take a quick break. I'll be right back. Please stay with us. Nigeria needs focused leadership to take decisive action to end insecurity, reposition our economy for businesses to thrive, and restore total people land. Tinubu he will reposition Nigeria for business in the agricultural sector, for food security, and improve farmers' welfare. Electricity will be reformed for a brighter Nigeria. Health, education, and housing will be more accessible and affordable. Nigeria will be transformed into an entertainment powerhouse, a home of sporting achievement and a renowned tourist destination. Tinubu's government will build a Nigeria where we prosper together. He has done it before, and he will do it again for Nigeria. For Renewed Hope 2023, vote Ashwagyu Bola Ahmed Tinubu and Senator Kashim Shatima as President and Vice President of Nigeria. Vote APC. Welcome back to Politics Tonight, and I still have with me Mr. Kalejaye Adeboye Paul. He is the All Progressive. In a Jeremy Fellow of Federal Special Advisor on Rural Development during Tinubu's administration and Special Advisor on Rural Development during Fashola's tenure. Now, how do you intend to channel your political wealth of experience into good representation? First and foremost, I have said it earlier on, and it's important to emphasize this that there is no politics of isolation in the National Assembly. That's what is called the National Caucus. That's what is called the regional caucus. That's what's called the state caucus. First and foremost, for me to align myself with the various caucuses, because that's where you can get things done. We have 360 people in the Federal House of Representatives. It also shows you that migration of people diverse experience. So, I need to bear my experience. You also want to understand that even in the National Assembly, in the various committees that are appointed, your pedigree comes to play. Your experience comes to play. So I have had experience in rural development. I've had experience in business. I've had experience in journalism. I have experience in, you know, in so many fields. So I hope and I, I'm looking forward that I'll be able to serve in good committees, when I say good com committees, that are relevant to my experience. And then from there on, I can impact first and foremost on the nation. Because your impact first is on the nation. I can join in ensuring that we make good laws for the country. And I gave an example that I believe that the aviation industry needs some better attention. The idea of people staying in the airport for three, ten, five, six hours. That's my last trip to Abuja. I, I 12.30 a.m. Yes, they may have problems, but we need to examine the laws that governs the aviation industry. Right. So I intend to use my experience to make good laws, first and foremost, to tap the potential that is available in the national for my people. For instance, I know there is also the national quota. I know there is also scholarship schemes. You have the Federal Scholarship Board. Who are those benefiting from those scholarships? I have not seen anybody from my Jigunle benefiting. So I intend to dig into those areas where I can also get employment for my people. I have not seen any Jigunle person who is in any federal appointment. Or, they have, we have graduates, we have people who are well learned, we have young people who need. I intend to do this. 
the line follow in Nigeria, me fellow in federal constituency, the former press, the, the former press that was used as, as Nigerian press, the facilities the line follow there. And then what they do there now is ceremonies. Can't we deploy it to better use? Can't we have a big skill acquisition center All right, then. where it, people it, can it. develop skills and do well for themselves and for the nation? Those are some All right, of the in things. that regard, how would you rate the kind of support you're getting from the people of a Jeremy Federal Constituency? Without exaggeration, I must thank the people of a Jeremy Federal Constituency. I had a rally three days ago. It was unprecedented. I've been in politics for close to over 30, 40 years of my life. I've never seen that kind of rally. I've never seen people through power to identify with the All Progressives Congress as a party and to identify with me and other candidates of the, the place where we have the Ibos, the Yoruba, the outside. And I see that the voting is cutting across tribal sentiments. People are beginning to look at what do you want to offer them? I've issued out and have distributed over 50,000 pamphlets of my brochure. Well, would you agree that PDP has a stronghold in that constituency? How do you intend to break through, to overpower that? It must also interest you to know that the current member of the House of, House of Representatives is an APC member. They had a, the PDP had an inroad during the Jonathan's administration. And all of us are priv privileged to know what happened then. Never will that happen again. Lagos is predominantly an APC state. Ajero me. And of course, the local government is being governed by APC. And you need to see the massive development that is going on in Nigeria. If you get to uh, people, I invite friends. When I say I live in Ajegunle, I was born in Ajegunle. I live in Ajegunle, have businesses, empires in Ajegunle. And I live there, I stay there, I eat with the people, I dine with the people. I'm a grassroots person. And I need to let you know that in that place, we don't play tribal sentiment. We don't play tribal politics. So I want to say that gone are the days when the PDP had a stint of it. Since democracy, advent of democracy, that was the only ones that PDP had an inroad. And then we cannot explain the circumstance. But I tell you that uh, uh, the people are predominantly APC supporters. All right. Uh, of all the many challenges bedeviling your constituency, Adrian Mifeledu, predominantly is the big Today, we don't have too much challenge in terms of road infrastructure. Governor Sonwulu has just constructed a highway, a high street called the Mbakadoso. That was a major street. In Nigeria, me fellow today, we have four major high, 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 high streets that cut across both Nigeria and Ifeludun. And I tell you that the local government chairman had been so well in terms of, you know, constructing the access roads. There is, there is so much interlinkages between the various you know, inner roads and the high streets. That does not say that we have everything that we need in terms of road infrastructure. We still need more. And I also will you know, join hands with the local government chairman, join hands with the state government, and then go with my constituency project to ensure that we have more roads. But what I see as a major challenge in federal consistency is the potentials of the people to be honest. And today, we are predominantly sports people. We are predominantly people who are doing well in games. We are predominantly people who are doing, uh, doing well in music. Right. That's where you have uh, our strength majorly. And as I speak with you, there is the Makana Stadium being constructed by the government of Ayola, Ayola Fatai. It's massive. It's a dream for Ajero Mi fellow federal constituency. And under this administration, the job is like 90% completed. So people will have a place to distribute energy. And I, I speak with you, there are schools, all major schools in Ajero Mi fellow do enjoy the various mini, like a mini stadium. You have sporting activities at schools there, even in primary schools. So we have had who are visionaries, right. who are doing well, and tend to join hand to pick it from where they are, and then we can work in harmony and move Ajiro Mi fellow Nufera constituency forward. All right, you dedicated your book titled Undeterred.
the pendulum swings um, to Ashwajibola Ametunumbu, who you call your political mentor. Yeah. Now, what do you think Nigerians stand to gain from his presidency? Okay, I was having a side discussion before we came in, and I said we'll be very lucky, and I pray we are lucky as Nigerians to have an Ashwaju presidency. I have worked with him. I've seen him in action, and I know that he's a visionary leader. One thing you give to Ashwaju is that Ashwaju will create abundance. And you cannot fight poverty under, you know, what you call very meager opportunities. It will create more opportunities in terms of, first and foremost, plugging the loopholes. You see there are so much loopholes in terms of our revenue generation. Remember what he did in Lagos, generate revenue generation from 600 million to about you know six billion before he left. That's why everybody has picked it up from. The, for, the problem of Nigeria is first of all to create abundance, block loopholes, and then ensure even distribution of national resources. It's important for us to move forward. You also want to understand an Ashwaju personality. An Ashwaju personality is a man who taps from the avalanche of materials, human and material resources that is available for him to use. And that was some people were saying that, oh, why is he delegating questions to people? Why is he not answering all the questions? He's not an island unto himself, for God's sake. He's going to make use of people, people of pedigree, people of high integrity, because he's a collective government. Though the box stops on his table, but then you need good people. You need intelligent people. You need dynamic people. You need good potential. So be able to harness the previous problems that you have in Nigeria and turn it to posterity. So an Ashwaju is a team player. Take it or leave it. He's a team player. He's not a man. He's not a dictatorial leader. He's a man who comes right. out widely. So I, I'm beginning, I, I feel and I know that Nigerians will be happy having All an right. Ashwaju uh, Lastly, before we go, how then will you rate his chances of winning this 2023 presidential election? Well, you see, is Ashwaju Bola meant to and others, simply put. Okay, who are those campaigning? The man is campaigning all over the nation. But well, we have other presidential candidates also campaigning. You cannot match the city has visited. You can see overwhelming response. I know. Look at what happened in that city has visited. So it shows that the collectivity of people who are right thinkers and right doers who are beginning to feel that this problem of Nigeria, we must tackle, we must, you know, face it headlong. And we're looking for a round peg in a round hole. So Ashaji is a round peg in a round hole. So I'm sure that we are going to benefit. And I say that his chances are the best amongst all other contestants. I do not see he's going to come first, very clearly, and you have a distant second and a distant third. I don't know of others. But I tell you that He's putting in all that is needed. He's putting resources together, both human and materials. And then he's putting, and I see him winning. All right. Thank you so very much, Mr. Tonight, it is the APC candidate for House of Representatives to the Ajero Mi Fellow do Federal Constituency of Lagos State. Thank you very much for coming on Politics Tonight. Thank you very much. And right. yours, good night. And thank you very much for watching. That's all we have on Politics Tonight. Thank you very much for watching. I am Ola Jumo. The following is a paid presentation by ShopX TV. Happy New Year. ShopX TV is proud to bring you a very special offer. Yes, from now till January 31st, 2023, we are offering our customers an opportunity to save up to 66% of our best-selling kiddies product. <laughs> Struggling with energetic kids, but you just can't get them to sleep. You need Happy Nappers, the perfect plate pillows that pull open to sleepy sound. Your child can snuggle up and nap inside of it. They are happy, happy nappers. They love to sleep and play with you. Then, when it's time to sleep, you just pull on their feet. Sleepy time, playtime, anytime is happy napper time. And when the napping is done, they fold back in for even more fun. 
Ordinarily, play pillows or blankets are not as much fun. They don't hold the heat in, unlike happy nappers. Just look at the fun characters that your kids will love. And the sleep sacks are completely enclosed to keep your child warm and cozy during nap times or even through the night. Toluani absolutely loves her happy. Gray shock, white unicorn, and even a pink unicorn. Don't forget, Happy Nappers comes with ShopX TV's 30-day money-back guarantee. Happy Nappers are a great gift for any child over 7 years of age. Get the 150 Naira and the large Happy Napper for 39,950 Naira only. But wait, you can get 3 medium Happy Nappers for 59,950 Naira and three large happy nappers for 69,950 naira. Call the number on your screen now or visit our website to order yours now. But hurry, limited stock available. So call now while stock lasts. You can be a happy napper too! The proceeding was a paid presentation by ShopX TV. At TVC News, wherever the big news story is happening, we're geared up to break it. TVC News. First, with breaking news. At TVC News, wherever the big news story is happening, we're geared up to break it. TVC News, first with